El mismísimo director general de Xbox, Phil Spencer, se juntó con Charlie en Gamescom y esto fue lo que nos dijo sobre el futuro de Xbox. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome CEO of Microsoft Gaming, Mr. Phil Spencer, to the stage. How are you, my dear? I'm well. How are you? It's good I to be am here. So good. Have How's you had... your first day of Gamescom? I mean, it's been exciting. I've yeah. had a walk around. I've looked at some things, but I've mostly just been sitting here talking to Diablo and Age, and now to you. So it's like I saw the Age. Yeah, it's kind awesome. of like a ten out of ten. Who was day. out here for Diablo? Diablo was Ron and Chris. Roderick here. was here. Roderick and Z, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. good. <laughs> yeah, good vibes. Um, I want to start by saying that the last time we were together, we were sat in the Bethesda London office planning to steal loads of stuff. Because uh, we're loads of Are stuff Are we saying planning us. because we don't want planning, people to know that we yes, did? Yes, well, you've said it now, so I was protecting us. I still have my stuff. <laughs> Well, every time I talk to you, I always ask what you're playing. So I want to know what you're playing and why is it still Vampire Survivors? No, no. <laughs> well, I am playing Vampire Survivors, yeah, so I yeah. got all the achievements. Obviously, yeah. But now they have couch co-op, and I'm playing with yeah. my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, Kelly, who doesn't play a ton of video games. Yep. <laughs> so the fact that we can play couch co-op yeah. and she's enjoying it, like I'm all in. As well. yeah, so yeah. what I'm playing right now on console, I'm playing a lot of Remnant 2. Mm -hmm. I really like Remnant 2. Yep. Um, it's a great game to play with friends. Uh, I had my ROG ally on the mm -hmm. way out here. I'm playing a game called Fist, which is in Game Pass. Yep. It's a really nice platformer. I'm playing Brotato. Have you played Brotato? I, this is also the first I've heard of it, so please no. tell me more. What is that? Bro, so Brotato's <laughs> not on Xbox. Okay. I'll say yet, but I don't have any, well, it would be great to get on Xbox. Uh, it's a Steam game. It's kind of like, let's say it's inspired by Vampire Survivors. Oh, I see. But you play as a potato. You have a type. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm very simple. Yeah. I have a small brain. So one stick, move around, yeah. um, but it's it's a fun game. So I'm yeah. playing some Brotato. I just finished, um, what, did, what did I just finish last? Bramble, have you played this game? No, I've had it recommended a bunch Ooh. though. Yeah, it's, it's a nice short playthrough, isn't Ooh, it? As well? But it's it's kind of a demented game. Like a it starts game. off, <laughs> demented, yeah. It starts off very cute yeah. and you think, oh, like this is awesome. And then it like goes into some very crazy, great game. Zags. Great game, but it's like some very, Dark, let's just say dark okay. places. I'll get it on the download queue. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, Wonderful. It's good. So we're going to focus on Gamescom now. We're going to stop flapping our gums okay. and actually talk. Uh, our in Gamescom, quite literally surrounded by Xbox fans. 50,000 square feet yeah. of Xbox booth. It's pretty good. And Biggest this is, ever. This is the first time in a while you've stepped on it as well. So I want to know why it's so important that Xbox has showed up so big this year. Well, being here, being anywhere, but being in Europe with mm -hmm. our customers, with players, with the creators that are here. I did a creator uh, get together both last night, today, met mm -hmm. with some partners. It's, yeah. You know, it's these moments where the industry comes together, mm -hmm. uh, where we can talk to each other, that the consumers can come in, the players can come in, put their hands on games. I just think it's, it's, it's critically important. Obviously, COVID messed up a bunch of things. We're kind of, that's in the rear view mirror. So when you had the opportunity this year to go big, at Gamescom, uh, we said, let's go. The other thing that's awesome in the booth is how much third-party support that's yes, here, yeah. right? Like Ed Boon's game's here, Mortal Kombat's here. Mm -hmm. um, we have the DLC for Cyberpunk's here. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just yeah. awesome to see how many of our partners, Rod's game's here, Diablo, <laughs> uh, how many of the third-party support on the floor. It's, it's an important thing for us as a platform. Um, and it's just nice to get reconnected back with the community here. Yeah. And then Starfield, over, I feel like I'm showing everyone over here. I can't here see it. Is I can't see it. It's too small. <laughs> I was, well, it is actually technically massive, to correct you there. And we're only a week away from early access, so how, is it, how exciting is it seeing this game coming to Xbox? And we're so close now. Yeah, we, we've been working on it for a long time. Um, I've known about it for you know, even before we, 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 partnered, we acquired Zenimax, so it's been great to see Todd and the team work more closely yep. with them than we ever have on any game. You know, there aren't that many moments where we get to launch a new IP that has the amount of buzz and anticipation mm -hmm. that Starfield does. A lot of games you'll launch that are new IP and then maybe they build into their strength, mm -hmm. but like there is just a crazy amount of anticipation. And the thing that I love is the confidence that the team has right oh, now, yeah. like putting out review codes two weeks before launch, because it's a big game and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, the first three to four hours are a little bit hunt and peck, figure out like, well, what am I actually doing? Mm -hmm. Then you get on a side quest or something and like the game just like blows up in terms of its epic scale. Uh -huh. So I love the fact that the team is so confident in giving uh, reviewers mm -hmm. time with the game before they're actually 
reviewing or just you know talking about what they think of the game. Yeah, and just behind that, in the rearview mirror, if you will, kind of, I think that's how it works. Forza Motorsports over there, yeah. and that's not that's out not too long after Starfield, is it? That's right. That's October. Uh -huh. I got. We did a take home two weeks ago where we got the kind of the opening of the game. Looks fantastic. Uh, I'm a huge motorsport fan. Yeah. And I'd say turn 10 for us for a long time in our first party has really been a technical showcase. Mm -hmm. Like Chris Tector, the team on the tech side, the stuff that they, they get the most out of the hardware, yeah. I think of any of our first party teams. They just like, that's their, their focus along with building a great racing simulator. Uh, and it's the game looks fantastic, and oh, it's yeah. uh, I can't wait for people to get to play. The ray tracing on track looks great, giving people some options. You'll see all that as they kind of talk about more of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but motorsport is uh, tried like something that I'll one of those franchises I've played since the beginning, and I can't wait it's for the, the full stable, release. Huh? Yeah, it's motorsport is mwah, chef's kiss. Well, and, like <laughs> kudos to Turn Ten. They started with motorsport, expanded to Horizon, so now they built like a a sibling franchise to motorsport. Yep. Um, you know, they've just done such a really good job of growing the relevance of Forza, both for simulation and arcade players. Yeah. Great job. Yeah, absolutely. So Phil, I know one of the things in chat and many of the fans really appreciate about you is how much you love to play the games themselves. So I know just over here, we can't see behind me, we've got the Stalker 2 demo yeah. and you've taken that for a spin as well. Um, it's been 16 years since the original. So can you tell us what stood out to you? Yeah, you know, Stalker, if you played the first game, has kind of a unique setting and story. And it's really nice to see what they've done in this build of continuing the lore of what Stalker is about, uh -huh. um, what your role is in the world, and, and kind of how the world invites you into what your role is and your, your kind mm -hmm. of task. Um, I'm trying to do this without kind of spoiling too much. <laughs> so, but, uh, you can spoil if you want. No, You're no, no, that's their yourself. game. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I, I'll also say, um, you know, they're a, a, a dev that spends a lot of time uh, perfecting the game in terms of the technology. I think mm -hmm. they're still on that track. Yeah. Like they're still, obviously the game's not done. Uh, so it's, uh, but yeah, I, I just love that they've, done a good job moving the Stalker kind of world forward, but being very tried and true to what Stalker's about. Yeah, for sure. And um, to be totally honest, even under the best circumstances in games development, it's super tough. But yeah. for G GSC, obviously, it's a bit more complex, the situation they've got there. So I want to know, what does it mean to you to see these guys get here and get a demo out of the door? Yeah, you know, it's, I, I've stayed in touch with the team over the years, and especially, as you say, like the last couple of years, it's, it's an emotional thing. Right, like mm -hmm. you almost feel hollow asking them about how their game is. Yeah, of course. When you yeah. think about the world and what that that they live in, mm -hmm. and what that studio has has gone through and really continues to go through, um, I think for them, I, I see, and they've talked about this when I've talked to them, that building the game has kind of been a refuge in a uh -huh. way, um, and it's it's cool to see that, you know, yeah. I hope it never gets replicated again in terms of something <laughs> yeah. that has to happen. But I'll say for the team, the fact that they're here, I was playing, they were literally pushing a new build right as I was playing that build. So their attention to wanting to put their best foot forward, even under the most difficult circumstances, mm -hmm. I have a ton of confidence in them yeah. and they're on that, that journey, but it's, you know, it's an emotional thing when you're talking to a team that's, that's going through, I don't want to talk about it in past tense, what that team is going through. So it's uh, it's really special to me that they're here and that gaming can be part of how they're getting through it. Yeah, for sure. And as well as being here, there are so many communities for so many different games. Yeah. There are Xbox, you've got Sea Thieves. I'm doing it again. Sea Thieves over there. You've got an ESO over there. They can't see it, you know. No, I know. I'm just There's doing... actually nothing over <laughs> I'm there. telling so you where like they all are. It's an <laughs> empty, like, there's nothing here. <laughs> And you're just it's like not a green a, screen, it's an illusion. The grounded <laughs> communities over there, it's actually not. But, but what's it like for you to see all of these communities come together? Community and gaming to me are linked. Like yeah, it's 100%. from my early days of literally going to the arcade. Mm -hmm. I'm the old guy, but like that's the only <laughs> way I could play that and Pong at my home, at my house. That's how I play video games. And the there was a community in the arcade of like, hey, what's the new hot console? Not video game console, but actually arcade console mm -hmm. cabinet that you're going to go play. Um, and I love that today those communities, um, they're still physical. Like you asked, why are we here at Gamescom? Because we have a fan fest tonight. Indeed, it's going to be yeah. awesome with the local community and the people that are here, but also the virtual communities. 
And I think it's one of the unique things in video games that video games can connect people across geographies, yeah. across races, religions. Like it is just a connector of people. Mm -hmm. And when it's a game like a Sea of Thieves, like a Grounded, like a Flight Sim, um, so many of our games now have these Elder Scrolls Online, which has a big, over there, yeah. has a big presence mm -hmm. on our, our show floor. And they've got uh, a really nice table in there as they well. They do that big round table. A really nice built. table. I, it's another one of the things on my list to see if I can pilfer. for. I won't like oh, to. Oh, we should steal that. Yeah, we, we should. But the thing, <laughs> I also want to make sure on the community side, it's not just about multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. Like you find, like think about Skyrim. Yeah. You know, Skyrim has an amazing community around it. And it's not because there's a bunch of PvP or PvE, right? It's people come together for their shared love of the world and the characters and the lore and their role in that. Uh, I just think that's a very special part of gaming, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's a privilege, I guess, for us at Xbox to have some franchises that are a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. And this, what we're seeing here, is I think it fully opens to the public tomorrow and all. It's so. the sweatshop tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah this it's going to really pop off then. <laughs> in here. It's going to be warm. <laughs> you got the good day to come and sit here, I think. I'm here tomorrow. I'm here. Oh, well, there but you yeah, go. Now, there yeah, you like, do people know? Like, today is what the press day, right? <laughs> yes, is that what they yeah. call it? I don't know if that has an official name. I should know, but I don't know. <laughs> um, and then tomorrow, the, the the consumers, the players, come in. Have you ever seen like when they open the the, the running? It's yeah. ridiculous. And then right? eventually, at some point, I, I'm gonna stop pointing. But the escalators and they get so busy. Yeah. Every time I come to Gamescom with someone new, I tell them you have to see the running when it opens yeah. and the escalators when yeah. they're full. It's yeah. great. It is, yeah, it's awesome <laughs> to be back. And I, I think they feel like this might be one of the biggest Gamescom ever. It feels like, it already, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And it's uh, kudos to the team here who's kept this going. Um, yeah. They went virtual for a while, but mm -hmm. now we're here back, and there's so many. Um, there's so many fans and players here. Yeah. It's like just such a special time. And it's special for Xbox as well, as we've mentioned a few times on the show already, that it's the 10th anniversary of ID at Xbox. I have my ID at Xbox. There right it is. Right He's sporting it. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> I'd love, love for you to reflect on any uh, memories or moments you have from the introduction of ID and how it's gone over the past 10 years. Uh, I'm going to start with a couple things. Yeah. One. We always have discussions internally when new things are going to happen on the console. Mm -hmm. And there's there's always some different kind of feelings about the input. When free-to-play came to console, it'll be the end of the console if free-to-play <laughs> comes to console. Some people think it is. But, like, you know, clearly the console is still there and, uh, and, and free-to-play happened. ID at Xbox. Well, when we have unmanaged partners mm -hmm. that are building games on Xbox, what does that mean for a console? Because we started with this silly thing where publishers had two slots of arcade games okay. that they could go do. It was like a, a, a silly policy in Xbox. Opening it up and allowing anybody who submits and actually has good intent mm -hmm. to build a game on the platform has led to some of the best games that have been. People forget like that Fortnite actually came yeah. through ID at Xbox. Yeah. When you ask about like some of the special moments, I have to go to games from places where we'd never seen games mm -hmm. from Xbox. I remember going to the Brazil game show and meeting the devs behind Eritana, Eritana. I'm probably missing the pronunciation. But it's this, I think it was the first Brazilian developed Xbox game. Oh. And it came through ID at Xbox and this team of guys, we were in Sao Paulo and they came together and I, I kind of, I met them at the show and it was so cool. Just to think, it used to be there were like three places on the planet where games were built. Mm -hmm. And now you have games coming from all over the place. And people tell their stories through their lived experience and their and world. totally different stories, as you totally say, around is. the world. Yeah. Now, whether it's explicit in like, I'm going to do a, a game about Brazil, mm. or I'm going to do a game about something else, but yeah. through the lens of what the I see in the world. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing, whether it was like Candleman, which I think was the first Chinese-developed ID at Xbox game. Like, I always love when we're finding new ID at Xbox games from new places and new partners. Uh, and I just think that's like, if we're going to find new players, we're going to have more creative. And the mix of those two things, ID has been Fundamental and ten years ago announced ten at Gamescom. Ten years. Yeah. Houses. That's how old I am. <laughs> Feels like yesterday. Or I don't remember it. I should say I don't remember. <laughs> I, I don't thought remember you were saying actually. you were ten years yeah. old. Then. No. It's no. <laughs> a great job for no. a ten-year-old that no. you got. No, I like no, but it's like that. It was ten years ago, and yeah. I remember the like trepidation. What's going to happen when unmanaged developers can build console games? You know what happened? Some amazing things happened. Indeed, it did. So another thing that you talk about a lot as well is when you can play games whenever, however, and wherever you want. And I know that's something you really want to give to fans however possible. So I want to know what that commitment looks like both at Gamescom and maybe the months ahead, what that story is going to be. Yeah, it, our 
the critical thing we look at at Teams Xbox in terms of our success is how many players. Yeah. How many players do we have? And even more and more, how much are people playing? Mm -hmm. Like, are, do we have a, a, a platform that has games for kind of all days of uh, all hours of the day? Sometimes you're playing with your family, and what mm -hmm. can I do? Sometimes I'm, I'm, it's just me time, and I want to go do things. And how many players show up? We look at our monthly active players, our daily active players. And when I say on Xbox there, whether you're playing on the cloud and you're streaming to a device that we don't know anything about, whether you're playing on a PC, and as Microsoft, we know something about the PC, <laughs> or you're playing on one of our consoles. Uh -huh. Like, those are all Xbox players. Or, like, flying over here, I'm playing on my ROG Ally on the airplane, and I think about that as my Xbox away from home, or my Steam Deck. Like, I want those things to feel as connected and as complete as an Xbox experience as any piece of hardware that we build. Um, we will continue to, to focus on hardware. It's an important part of our team and what we can go do. But I don't want our hardware to be a limitation on who can actually feel like they're part of the Xbox community. Mm -hmm. If you buy hardware from us, we're going to do an awesome job supporting you. We want to make sure great games are there. If you have the device that you want to bring and be part of Xbox, we also want that to be 100% great on Xbox. And it's, as you said, it's putting the player's decision on where they want yeah, to play absolutely. at the center and of it. it's just there for them, whichever one they want to That's grab right. at that time. And not only is it there, my save game moves with me, mm -hmm. my community is there, yep. so I can make progress yeah. on, any, on any platform I want to play on, and I can grind my, my characters, I can make my way through the story anywhere I've been. It's one of the best things about Starfield, pointing at it. <laughs> That's um, over there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been moving, I play on work, on my PC, when I go home, I sit on my console and I go play. And it's just a continuous experience for me, mm -hmm. and, and everything yeah. moves, it's fantastic. Amazing, so I also want to know, while we are here, is there anything you're particularly excited about trying, either on the booth, off the booth, what have you got your eyes on? Uh, well, Stalker 2 was one, so it was great yep. to get to sit and talk to the team yesterday and just connect, yeah. right, and, and see how they're doing. Um, I have this funny thing with uh, Ed Boon, mm -hmm. where Ed and I have known each other for a long time, head of, of the team behind Mortal Kombat, but we tend to cross ourselves on stage all the time. It happened ah, last night uh -huh, at, yeah. at OLM. Congratulations last night, by the way. Smash But accepting an award oh, yeah. that team did on, on like an Xbox, yeah, I didn't do it. Yeah, but you accepted it so well, Phil. <laughs> well done. Thanks. <laughs> I'm very good at coming out with a trophy and a microphone and accepting an award for work that other people did. And that team did awesome work. But I, I want to get over with uh, Mortal Kombat. I actually, we had the same thing at, I still call it E3, though no one else does, mm -hmm. but, but that June event, yep. um, our showcase, but also I think he was in Keeley's The Place, The Play Days thing, mm -hmm. which was great. But we just, we tend to fly by. So I, I saw him on stage, because he was on, I think, right after me yep. as I was coming off stage, which is how we normally spend time together. But a really great third parties here, and, and I know I'm supposed to pick some obscure indie game, um, but I want to sit down with Ed and get my hands on Mortal Kombat, so I'm hoping I get to do that. I'm going to recommend to you, if you haven't yet, go play Little Kitty Big City. That's the I one, have not. That's the one I'm I've not really a cat on. person, though. Phil! No. You have Are to we going to fight? Spoil it, don't you? That was, I have to thank you now for the interview, and you've just gone and said you're not a cat person. I'm a dog person. My right. dog's name is Oogie. Oogie? Oogie, O O G I E. Oh, okay. He's a rescue. Maybe I'll let you off. He's the most awesomest dog ever. Right. Fine. But, like, but yeah. <laughs> it's so. Big kitty, you know, big city. What would say? Oh, well, imagine if it was big kitty, little city. Now, that, that's a game. Yeah. <laughs> Someone make that one. Well, Phil, we got to wrap there. You're absolutely fantastic as always. Thank you for joining us. You are. No, you are. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your show. Thank you. Don't steal too much stuff, and I'm sure we'll speak to you soon.